Climate change leaves us with questions, not just about how fast the water is rising, but everyday things like, is it ever going to be too hot to live here? And how can I reduce flooding in my neighborhood? In a new podcast from WWNO, WRKF, and PRX, reporter Travis Lux and comedian Lauren Malera explore some of those questions from a city at the forefront of climate change, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's called Life Raft. Climate change is scary, but Life Raft is not. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Civics 101 is brought to you by Progressive, one of the country's leading providers of auto insurance. With Progressive's Name Your Price tool, you say what kind of coverage you're looking for and how much you want to pay. And Progressive will help you find options that fit within your budget. Use the Name Your Price tool and start an online quote today at Progressive.com. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Civics 101 is supported in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Breaking news from Georgia where Democrats have picked up at least one Senate seat in the state's highly charged runoff election. CBS News projects the Reverend Raphael Warnock has... You're listening to Civics 101. I'm Nick Capodice. I'm Hannah McCarthy. With a special election in Georgia cementing a Senate controlled by the Democratic Party, today we explore this topic. What happens when one party controls the House, the Senate, and the presidency? So this is what we in political science this is what we call unified control. This is Dan Casino, our stalwart civics Virgil and professor of political science at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Unified control? I'm going to remember that one. Yeah, some new vocab to keep in your civics back pocket. And again, unified control is when one party controls both chambers of Congress and the presidency. And unified control, to some extent, is the best case scenario for democracy because we don't have a division of responsibility. And when Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th, we will again be in unified control. We were also in it during the first half of President Trump's term, but after the 2018 midterms, we were not in unified control. We were, and here's our second vocab term of the day, in what is called divided government. Democrats control the House, Republicans control the Senate and the presidency. If you don't like what's happening, who are you supposed to vote against? You don't know whose fault it is. This is something that we see this very moment. I remember during a 2020 debate, both candidates blamed the other party for not passing a COVID-19 relief package. Why haven't you been able to get them the help they need? 30 seconds here. Because Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve it. I do. But you're the president. I do, but I still have to get. Unfortunately, that's one of the reasons I think we're going to take over the House because of her. The Republican leader in the, in, the, in the United States Senate said he can't pass it. He will not be able to pass it. He does not have Republican votes. Why isn't he talking to his Republican friends? Let me follow up. How common is unified control? I can't remember too many times in my life that the same party had the White House and both chambers of government. Yeah, you're right. Divided government has been the norm in modern politics. But prior to the 1960s, with a few notable exceptions, unified control was the norm. President Woodrow Wilson and others uh, criticized the divided government for that division of responsibility. Uh, Wilson had a rather horrible quote about it. He wrote, how is the schoolmaster, the nation, to know which boy needs the whipping? Yikes. Which tells you something about pedagogy in the 1880s, right? If I don't like what's happening in Congress, who am I supposed to vote against, right? I don't know. So both parties can avoid responsibility because you can just blame it on the other guy. If Nancy Pelosi doesn't push the policies you want, that's fine. She can just blame it on the Senate or blame it on the president. If the president does the policies you want, he can blame it on Nancy Pelosi. There's divided accountability. And that makes it really hard, first off, for Congress to pass anything because our system is set up with multiple veto points. It's very easy to stop a bill from becoming a law and very hard to push it through. So that means it's hard to get anything done under divided government. Okay, so those are some of the downsides of divided government. Are there any potential benefits? Yeah, sure. Uh, The benefits of divided government aren't too different from the benefits of grand sweeping ideas like separation of powers and checks and balances. One party doesn't control everything, so there's a necessity for compromise. The branches are checking each other, and so too are the parties. Under unified government, it's going to be easier to pass things through in general, but that also means that there's going to be greater accountability. After Obamacare was passed, right, you've got the 2010 midterm election. Obamacare was pretty popular now. When it was first passed, it was not at all popular. And so voters didn't have to look around and say, oh, who do I vote against if I didn't like Obamacare? They knew exactly who to vote against, and they in fact did vote out Democrats in the House and in the Senate as punishment for passing bills that were unpopular at the time. 
I am loath to quote Spider-Man in a Civics 101 episode, but it sounds like Dan is saying, with great power comes great responsibility. The Peter Parker principle is more than apt, Hannah. That's it for today's episode. Remember to submit your questions at our website, civics101podcast.org.